Okay. There we go. Look at that. I got it to work. I got it to work, and I'm not a complete idiot. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, stupendous. Whatever, whatever other words Trump uses. Oh boy. I am not ready to go back to work tomorrow. Oh yeah. Give me the good stuff. Very nice. This is probably one of my favorite whiskeys right now. It's made in Texas, in Waco, the same place that the whole, uh, God, I almost wanted to say Columbine for a second, the whole Branch Davidian thing kicked off with ATF. <laughs> Irony. Howdy. Yeah, now I got two days off this week, actually. I got Sunday and Monday, so... There's that, but I ended up doing some work-related stuff today anyway, so really not a whole lot of days off. Ever. Oh god, I wish I, I could drink at work. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'd get fired pretty quickly. But, also on a side note, look at this big-ass ferro rod I got. This thing is huge, man. I used this to start a fire today. It was pretty dank. I was pretty happy with it. Oh, also, this whiskey is 64.2%. Uh, it's uh, just right. <laughs> oh, man. That is some good stuff. But yeah, I figured I would uh, just basically drink answer questions and talk about completely random stuff and probably watch a few videos here and there because uh that's what uh that's what normal people do right <laughs> smirnoff ice oh man i used to drink a lot of those and there used to be one back in the day called like a zima i think it was called zima i drank that a lot and then uh, Blue Moon, as far as beers go. Lately, I've been drinking a lot of like those White Claws, like the seltzers. Man, after I switched to those for a while, that and whiskey, I ended up losing like 30 pounds. That was part of like my whole weight loss thing I decided to try and do. It really made a big difference. Vodka Cranberry. That's a good one. You know, as at first, I I don't know, I'm not a big vodka guy until I started doing um, Bloody Marys. And with Bloody Marys, man, vodka, like a good one, is just awesome. It's like a... makes it worth it. <laughs> I actually had a Bloody Mary one time that had a had a whole chicken, like it had like a, a, a big-ass skewer through the middle, and it had a chicken wing and a whole like... Z folded slice of bacon. It's more like a salad. Traffic in LA. I've heard that is. Ooh, I've heard that is brutal. Uh, I had traffic the other day. I wish I could throw a picture of it. Um, but I was stuck behind a John Deere tractor. <laughs> that's that's traffic in my town. <laughs> a John Deere tractor and sometimes some loose cows. Gotta love the country. Oh man, that burns, but it burns in like all the right ways. Oh man. Yeah, it's kind of weird working nights because like, like, you know, I got Sunday, Monday off, but really I don't have to go to work until tomorrow at like 2 p.m. So it's like, kind of have like two and a half days off, 
really throws me off sometimes. Like, people are like, hey, man, what are you doing tomorrow? And I'm like, uh, what is... What is tomorrow? What is time anymore? <laughs> it means nothing to me. Oh, man. Hey, Beretta, what's up, man? Glad to see you could join us. I've only uh, gotten a few sips in, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to take much with this stuff. Jeez. Actually, I've taken three tours of this distillery. <laughs> Probably because they give me $10 off a bottle at the end. Weird calls about creatures. Yes, all the time. Actually, one wasn't even a call. Um, I was driving down our main street, and I saw a snake chasing a kid. So I had to... Well, first of all, I was thoroughly confused as to what was going on. And then... Um, I turned around, pulled up, sure enough, like, the kid's now gone back into the yard, and there's still, like, this snake, like, just slithering after it. Man, this kid must have pissed this snake off. So, like, I hop out, and the dad doesn't speak any English, and it's only Spanish. I speak no Spanish. I'm no habla espanol over here. And his dad's, like, motioning for me to, like, shoot it. And I'm like, bruh, I'm in the middle of town. Like, I'm not going to be trying to shoot a snake. Like, I'm a good shot. But like a slithering snake, man, that's 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 a hell of a shot right there. And uh, so anyway, I was like, hold up. I go back to the truck, and I always carry like a tomahawk. My my chief got me a tomahawk because I'm I'm one eighth Native American, so, so I guess he thought that was like appropriate, <laughs> and it came in handy. So uh, I think it was a CRKT tomahawk, and so I got it, and the dad like stunned it with a 2 by 4 like he smacked it with a 2 by 4 then had to chop its head off and then uh, threw it in the back of my police truck and I like drove the body out of town so yeah got to actually use a tomahawk at work one time so that was that was cool another time I had to like basically like baseball bat a raccoon they got into this lady's uh, house and it like fell through the ceiling in the middle of her like watching one of her drama shows it was like an 80 year old woman so this, this raccoon's like pissed off she's freaking out oh what type of indian uh tinklet and Haida out of uh alaska and uh so she's freaking out about this raccoon so i have to go in with a police baton and like i'm like man i'm not gonna shoot this raccoon in this lady's living room like that's that's gonna be a paperwork nightmare and so I'm trying to like, you know, we opened all the doors and I'm like, all right, man, time to time to go. This thing was pissed. It didn't want to go anywhere. So it like came right at me and I just like waylaid this uh, <laughs> this raccoon with a ass baton. I felt really bad because I love animals. But at the same time, man, I ain't getting bit by no raccoon. Like the rabies shots, that, that treatment's a bitch right there. I'm not trying to get that. So like I, I think I like basically I punted it close to <laughs> <laughs> our taser hold, hold up <laughs> hold up <laughs> let me grab something yeah babes right now yeah. oh Jesus all right I'm not, you it yeah yeah it's right here Oh, God. Oh, God, almost knocked over the whiskey. Anyway, so this is the taser right here, and it is a complete piece of trash. The battery is dead. Uh, whenever I contacted Taser, which is now Axon, I don't know, they changed, like, company names or somebody bought them, and I called them and was like, yo, I need a charger for this Taser. And they were like, okay, what's the model number? And I was like, uh, the first one y'all have ever, like, made? And they're like, yeah. Yeah, no, we don't charge those. Those are like custom-made batteries. You gotta, you gotta like put in a new battery. And I was like, oh, okay. Can I get a new battery? And they're like, yeah, we don't even make it for that anymore. So I'm like, great. I got a, I got a plastic paperweight here. I guess it looks cool. I can use it for training, but you know, other than that, <laughs> it's pretty much useless. But if you look at the batteries, I was actually thinking about jacking with this because my chief's like, here, you can just have it. Like, I don't know what else we're gonna do with it. So I was like, dope, bet. 
but it looks like kind of like two CR123 batteries or maybe maybe something just a little bigger you know I don't know what it is but uh I thought about maybe just like messing with it you know just kind of see what happens oof it's a tight tight ass fit but yeah I got like 30 cartridges for this thing uh, we actually decided not to go with a taser later on, uh, at least for me, because uh, you're only really supposed to use a less lethal like a taser if you have like a cover officer, somebody with lethal and somebody with less lethal. And I work alone most of the time. So instead, you know, unless I'm, I'm like, you know, dual wielding, you know, like pistol in one hand, taser in the other hand, I don't really have it a, a cover unit. So taser was like, not a priority we actually ended up spending that like dude these things are like 1700 bucks like not the old ones the new ones like the x2 it actually has like two cartridges so you have two shots like two consecutive shots so those are like freaking 12 1300 dollars so it's just uh it was like cost wise it just wasn't in the budget and i was like yeah i would rather get like new body armor than a taser but now we're kind of looking at tasers because they only work with, um, not only, but they, they work very well with mental subjects, people that are in a state called excited delirium. And uh, excited delirium can be fatal if it's not, uh, if it's not, uh, like, stopped. Yeah, bullet is like 50 cents. Mine are actually, uh, no, yeah, they're about 54 cents, actually, for the good... The good good the good stuff so I got the uh, the red tip the nice horny critical duty 135 grains good stuff everybody gets a taser I guess that makes sense but if you got like multiple officers showing up you know you got one doing lethal cover one doing less lethal cover everybody's got a taser so you can be like hey you want to light this guy up or do you like what do you want to do that works but like whenever i go on a call and it's just me the last thing on my mind is like hmm wish i had my taser <laughs> you know i basically go into something i'm like hey look i'm i'm by myself right now my backup is like 30 minutes away i'm probably just gonna shoot you so don't do anything stupid and like, they're like, yeah, I bet, bro. I can respect that. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. I'm glad we see eye to eye here. But yeah, not excited to go back to work tomorrow. I have so much work to do. Which sucks because I have like six jobs, really. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, everybody's getting hit. Oh man, somebody somebody hit me with another question. I'm I'm up for this question game. At least if I can't answer it, you know. What do you mean, Dub C? Like automotive? Are you talking about like the industry? I'm assuming you mean like defecated <laughs> instead of dedicated. I've never, I've, I haven't had anyone do a dedication in my, uh, no clergy yet. And luckily, no. Uh, one lady I had to transport, she was, uh, she was kind of nuts. And, uh, we transported her in an ambulance instead, and I got to ride the ambulance with her, but boy, she was crazy. Dude, I got body camera footage of that somewhere. If I can find it, I'm gonna I'm gonna do like a censored video on that. She was talking about like she's Jesus. I think three or four personalities came out, and I'm the mental health officer, so like I'm sitting there like, okay, yeah, I understand. You just just talk to me and everything, but internally I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> like this is not good. <laughs> like this is the craziest thing I've ever like. Like my face was all calm. 
but like my heart rate was probably like 120 i was like oh oh old girl here is about to get like <laughs> just things are about to get real uh but as far as what kind of shotgun does my department issue we have it's sitting behind me a mossberg 512 gauge and it's like the 20 inch barrel i think with the eight round tube pretty good i like it i like uh I don't know. I like shotguns. They're really multi-purpose. You can do so much with a shotgun. Get in trouble. Get out of trouble. Put out a fire. I've put out a fire with a shotgun one time. Just kept, like, it was a fuel fire on the ground. So uh, I ended up just just blasting the whole area with birdshot until, until the fire went out. I just kept kicking up dust, basically, and it suffocated the fire. Well, there, where there's a will and enough ammunition, there's a way. Mm. I want a 930, but I want the JM Pro. Or Maybelline. Uh, Maybelline. Jesus. Maybelline. Maybe it's Maybelline. But uh, maybe put like a different stock and stuff on it. I really, really want a semi-auto, but I also maybe want one of those stupid short 14-inch barrel semi-autos. Oh, work in a large factory, dude. Yeah, I whenever, uh, whenever I used to do contracting work, like uh, overseas and stuff, whether it be like security or if it was uh, industrial, like, there's all kinds of like ridiculous things happen. You get enough like guys together, predominantly in those situations, it's guys. There's gonna be a lot of weird shit that happens. Life is weird. Oh, wow, look at that. We got eight people. That's pretty fancy. That's a fancy number. Oh. Oh, man. That one burned. Burned in all the right ways. Oh, God. I've been working on this uh, active shooter slideshow for so long. One well, used to get sent to plants to shut them down. Oh shit! Yeah, I bet. I mean, that's a lot of guys getting um, getting like pink slips basically, and that's uh, oof, that's rough business right there. Want to get a Smith and Wesson M and P forty CO two? Oh wow, cool! I like the M and P's. Their ergonomics are pretty dope. Death threats, guns, drugs. Oh, you got a KG fifteen? I want to get that. Uh, what is it? That uh, that one that Keltec has the seven round. It's just the single barrel, single tube bulb up. I actually got offered a job <clears throat> up in Dallas, and it was uh, executive security, basically just security for people getting laid off. Like they would pay you forty dollars an hour to stand there with a gun, so they can fire this dude <laughs> in case he just goes nuts. And I'm like, I don't know about that. Like. I don't know if I want to be there for that moment in somebody's life. But then they had another job, and it was doing surveillance on the person after they got fired. I'm like, what kind of fucked up employer is that? If if you you have armed security there for when you fire the guy, and then you have surveillance to tail the dude after you fire him. Like, what? That's just crazy. Yes, the KS7, that's what it is. Oh, Beretta, that's sad, man. You got, well, I can't say shit. My girlfriend pretty much was like, no more. You need to focus on bills. I'm like, all right, yeah, I understand, but just hear me out. Damn. Just wants to spend money. <laughs> yep, yep, can relate. Except I need to buy new body armor soon, so that's just going to have to happen. But there's this new company. Well, it's not new. I think it's called Safe Flight Defense. They have a flexible, concealable body armor, right? Kind of the same as, like, level 3A. But it stops rifle rounds. But it's, like, $1,400. And I'm a government employee. And I don't make that much money. Oh, man, that's good shit. It's good shit, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. 
I've been working on this little slideshow for like some of my students to do a uh, the active shooter class, and I'm up to 88 slides with like two hours of video. And there's pictures on here that I definitely cannot show on YouTube. <laughs> there's one of a dude's face like legit blown out by a 5.56 five, round. And it's like for my examples of gunshot wounds. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty exciting. I got a good one of a guy like stabbed straight up in the chest by a kitchen knife. Um, there's actually a hospital here that was looking for a um, security guard, and they're actually armed, like they're a level three uh, security, so like they're allowed to carry pistols and stuff like that. So they actually don't have to conceal. You can just openly carry while in uniform. Uh, the difference between, okay, so like in Texas, there is no level one security, which makes no sense. Uh, there's level two security, which is uniformed, unarmed security. Then there's level three, which is uniformed, armed security, also known as commissioned security officers. And then there's level four, which is like all the above, but you get to wear a suit and tie and hide your gun. Yeah, most of the hospitals do have armed security nowadays just because, well, wacky shit happens at hospitals. <laughs> A lot of wacky shit. Pretty, I'm glad I don't work at a hospital. Then again, I'm usually taking a bunch of people to the hospital, so it's like, I'm here anyway. Oh, there's the train. Did everybody miss it? I sure missed it. I missed that train. Oof. God, I'm pretty sure this stuff is flammable. Disinfects everything. Who's got another question for me? Keep them rolling. You've been doing private security for a while? Yeah, I've been uh, kind of moving that direction slowly. My, uh, my entire like career plan was to do the military, do law enforcement, move into private security, and then move into like the training side of things and teach like the next generation of folks to to do that. I would love to get into a canine program. Yeah, and personal protection is kind of what I did in the army and uh, for some really useless <laughs> useless officers but hey you know they're more important and then uh i i'm actually on the judge's protective detail for our city so i get to get to be his lackey for the day and make sure nobody stabs him in the neck with a sharp pencil so that's cool it's, it's an interesting day Uh, that really depends, like a code purple, that, that really depends on every hospital they kind of have. There's no, like, set code system for, like, hospitals and businesses. Government may have a standardized system, but, you know, private institutions and companies, stuff like that, may have their own, and that's just what their, their entity uses. Yeah, just as long as it pays the bills. Yeah, no joke. Papa's got to buy a new box of ammo. <laughs> Can I have that paycheck? Oh, yeah, the other day I was talking about my, um, my SIG 226. Forgot I still have it here. But, yeah, this is probably one of my favorite pistols to shoot. I don't take it out as much as I would like to, but this one's got a um, 20 plus one capacity. Nice, good beaver tail for a good grip. Threaded barrel in metric because, because Swiss. But yeah, really, really nice nine millimeter. Still a Glock guy. Love that gun. Still a Glock guy like for carry all day long but for like comfy shooting target shooting going out and plinking the sig is where it's at 
I used to have a muzzle loader, and I uh, I enjoyed it. I just hated cleaning it, and I still I still shoot it on occasion. I actually used to carry that Sig for work, and one of the main reasons I switched to a Glock. Wow, Gen One! Holy cow, that's I haven't seen a Gen One Glock in a minute. That's cool. That's like almost collectible at this point. I carry a uh, Glock Model 45 with a... Uh, oh, actually, no, I'll just grab it. I got it right here. Right here. But yeah, that's... That's what gets carried for work every day. Yes, I have a Gen 19, or Gen 19, I'm way in the future, guys. I have a Glock 19 Gen 4 that I carry off-duty all the time. But this one right here is, well, it's technically a Gen 5, since that's the only, uh, only generation they've actually made this one in so far. But yeah, I got a nice little laser stipple job there, done by a local dude. Really, really enjoy that. Surefire X300. Very bright light. Need to clean my magazines. But yeah, uh, the reason I don't carry the SIG for work anymore is uh, it's just too goddamn heavy. That sucker, like, carrying three 20-round magazines and the pistol with another 20-round mag, that, that gun compared to the SIG is... Or, I'm sorry, that SIG compared to this Glock just is... It's night and day difference in weight and walking around with that much weight on your belt and stuff man just oh man it gives you back problems hip problems any experience with red dots uh yes i've gotten to shoot a couple of glocks like the mos glocks that are uh, cut for optics and i gotta say it's honestly really impressive and there's actually a new red dot that hollow sun came out with ah yeah hollow sun yeah i was just talking about it Hey, Skywalker. It's, look at everyone. It's the chosen one, the winner of the uh, the drawing today. He's, uh, I still haven't boxed it up yet. I'm a procrastinator by heart. So, but I, I, I just got to find a box that's big enough. <laughs> that's my main problem. <laughs> got to play that, um. Uh, too late to get a pistol in canada man yeah i like canada yes the hs 507c that is that is kind of what i want to get but there's a new one that hollow sun was kind of playing around with that shot show it's just straight solar it's got no battery at all it's the lowest profile red dot optic for a pistol i've ever seen it's so low you can actually still use the stock iron sights that's awesome but yeah, as far as the CO2 pistol, I would probably go for that Gen 3 Glock 19 that I did a video on a while back. And I'm only recommending that because that's what I have the most experience with. But it was a great little pistol until I gifted it to my basically father-in-law so he could shoot stuff in his backyard. Yeah, and that, that Hollow Sun that they debuted was just... Well, they didn't debut it. It's like a prototype. It's an experimental whatever. But I was like, y'all, y'all need to make that. Like, I, I need that in my life. So, if you could just hop on that hollow sound, that'd be great. Also, pro tip, guys. Um, if you shoot with a, uh, a flashlight, put some chapstick on that sucker. If you really shoot a lot of rounds, man, it makes it a breeze to clean off. Sig does have a few decent ones. They got what, like the 320 and uh, 226? I want to say. A couple offerings in CO2. Can't remember. It's been a while since I've been to a physical store because there ain't shit around me except pasture land. <laughs> Now, their, um, I think it's the MCX, or the, I think it's an MCX. They have a full-auto pellet. 
um, yeah, it's like a, I think it's a rifle. Looks like it's got a fake suppressor or whatnot. see 223 rounds going for it man that really depends um for a while there i was getting some israeli grade the uh, israeli military industries ammo i was getting it for like 26 cents a round which was really good honestly for brass cased full metal jacket ammo like quality um now the hornady critical defense 223 that stuff's like a dollar a shot so I really try not to use that one unless somebody really needs it. And by needs it, I mean needs to get shot with it. Because I'm not giving that stuff to anybody. But yeah, that stuff is expansive. Now see, I've been eyeing that Ruger 57. I got a bunch of 5.7 ammo that I like one in a raffle or something and I wanted to get a PS90 but I didn't want to get a PS90 unless I could like SBR it and I've been just too lazy to SBR really anything and then I travel out of state a lot so if you have an SBR you have to like notify the ATF and it's just uh, I was like nah they don't need to know nothing Uh, you should definitely look at the like international transportation laws. It's not really a firearm, so I don't really see there being too many issues, at least at the border. But I don't know. Well, yeah, the five seven rounds are expensive. They're expensive, but the reason why it's so expensive is because nobody else was really making them. You had American Eagle, and you had FN was like basically the only two manufacturers for that ammunition now that there is a competitively priced you know gun also offered in that caliber i think a lot more people are going to start you know manufacturing that ammunition it's really going to bring that price down yeah there's gonna i i agree i i also think i think there's going to be a drop in price and what was the other one i was looking at that 22 tcm right it's like a 20 round 1911 format pistol that shot 22 tcm which was basically like a neck down nine millimeter cartridge that shot a 22 caliber bullet it's like a stupid short 556 five, round basically later matt have a good one enjoy that tequila good sir yeah Honestly, yeah, it was completely random. I don't know if you watched the uh, the live stream, like, well, later on or whatever. But, like, I put everybody's name and number into, like, a random generator and was like, yo, pick it for me. So I went as random as I could just to make it as fair as possible. Oof. Man. Can't have any gun can wow they even restrict air guns huh that's crazy if you're gonna go through all that work to get a gun license you might as well get a real gun that sucks i hate when it, my cousin in germany has the same issue like even being a member of a gun club and stuff and all that stuff it's just insane like so difficult Yeah, yeah, like it was Dub C, then Barreto, and then, <laughs> and then Skywalker. Yeah, it chose number three, so I was like, all right, cool. And it, thankfully, I was able to get a hold of him. I was like, man, here, you need to, I hope you answer, <laughs> you know, basically. Because <laughs> if not, in three days, I'm going to have to do the drawing again. And use your concealed, um, yeah, Texas, uh, I don't want to say they're universal acceptor, uh, but they accept a lot of concealed carry licenses, regardless of state, which is good. I mean, I don't see an issue with that. 
I tell people all the time to go ahead and get that license. It's not too hard to get as long as you know how to shoot fairly decently. And um, and you never know. And you just never know when that's going to come in handy. Yeah, not all states. I mean, not all states are shall or, you know, constitutional carry, like shall issue or constitutional. It's may issue and, like, that's up to somebody else. And sometimes they're just like, Nah, I don't think you need it for, for whatever reason. Oh, I bet, I bet you have to, yeah, if you you have to be in compliance with each state law, that can be a pain in the ass. Uh, no, unfortunately for Texas, you have to be a Texas resident to get a uh, a carry permit or license to carry. I think Florida has an out-of-state permit, but I believe you have to be a U.S. citizen. Was it also Virginia that had an out-of-state permit? It's one of those. It's really weird. I, mean, I never understood why they had that. It's kind of like, yeah, I don't live there, but could I have a permit from you guys? I always thought that was interesting. Now, my mom, um, being a naturalized citizen, she still has her green card, but she's got a social security number and pays taxes and all that jazz. She, uh, she can legally purchase a firearm because she's a like naturalized citizen, but uh, she can also get a license to carry because she has a she's a Texas resident with. A, Social security number and a driver's license and all that jazz. So, I mean, she can get one, which for the longest time she thought she couldn't. I was like, nah, I mean, you've been here long enough. Like, you should be good. But yeah, she finally got hers. Actually, I actually have hers right here. I was cleaning it for the other day. It's a little Glock 43. This is a nifty little pistol. I really want to get my hands on one of the uh, 48s or the 43Xs with that flush-fitting 15-round cap mag. I mean, hell, that's basically like a super thin Glock 19. I thought that was the coolest thing I ever saw. Until next week, you know, and then I see something else that's the coolest thing I ever saw. <sighs> Running low. Going to need some more here. But yeah, I actually ended up programming 22 more frequencies on here. I think I'm up to like 50-something. But yeah, ended up applying for an FCC license today to broadcast on like higher power stuff too. Cause it's like 70 bucks and I thought, why not? Man, this one's like super easy to take apart. Actually, all the Glocks are. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's a Beofeng, so that, that radio is a Chinese manufacturer, so I'm not surprised Wish has it at all. Oh, come on. Why would you do that? There we go. Yeah, I've been ordering a few things here and there off of Wish just to kind of give it a try. Some of it's so cheap, it's like hard to resist. You know what I mean? I actually did, but I, everything I've bought from China that I've gotten in the last two months, really, like since like January 5th, uh, I've kind of put like in a self-imposed quarantine. I know the stuff can't really survive on inanimate objects for very long. No virus or disease really can, but I kind of just put everything in the corner of a room, unpack it. You know, put it in the trash can and then whatever packaging like I just go ahead and burn in the backyard I ain't taking no chances <laughs> I 
Oh, here we go. Round two. Yeah, I'm gonna I'll lice all the shit out of it. I'm also gonna lice all the shit out of my internals with this uh with this whiskey. I am drinking uh, Balcones Texas Single Malt Whiskey. So this is a nice pot distilled whiskey made with, uh, I believe, Texas grains. And uh, this one is 64.2%, and it's probably one of the better whiskeys I've ever had. And I'm not just saying that because I bought it and now I have to drink it. But actually, I, I really do enjoy this one. If you've ever had like a Macallan, like a 12 or a 15 year, this kind of tastes like that, but it's it's got like a real nice, sweet undertone, but it doesn't have like a lot of smoke to it. It's just real smooth, stupid smooth. And uh, this whiskey, it tastes like a 20 year whiskey, but they only have it in the cask for like three years which is just crazy to me. They, they're able to, to produce some like so quickly because uh, the, the temperature fluctuations and the differences in the, the Texas weather expands the cask and shrinks it and, you know, does that like very quickly, you know, over the, the course of months to years versus decades for other whiskeys. So like you're able to actually produce a very flavorful distilled whiskey faster than if you would in in Scotland or Ireland where the weather is so stagnant you know it takes a long time for that variance to happen and that's what they told me on the tour when I took it for three you know three times in a row <laughs> but yeah very very good stuff I'm, I'm a big fan of it um, I wish it was cheaper. That's like my only complaint. Oh, gin. I'm not a big gin person at all. No, not on the German rations. My cousin said he he sent them or he was going to send them, but he might just be bringing them with them because he's coming in May. And uh, let me check. Let me check my messages. Honestly, I haven't checked him in a while. But, um... He said, uh... He's, he's coming in May, so I'm, I'm pretty sure he's just gonna throw him in his suitcase and bring him with. Hell, they might actually have a better chance of making it through Customs. Or not. I mean, I don't know. Customs is kind of really... Like, on some next-level shit. But, yeah. No, I'm, I'm really, uh really curious to check those out i remember the old box ones whenever i was over there i got to try some like on their armed forces day you got to like visit the base so that was pretty cool but yeah the new ones i'm, I'm real curious to try them out but so far i gotta say my favorite mre ration as of late has got to have been that lithuanian one the uh i had some kind of beef can't remember what kind now. Wasn't the stew. But the Lithuanian was actually like really flavorful. Like it just tasted really good. I it was I was surprised. Minus the crackers. The crackers oof. Man, the crackers were like bulletproof. I'm not talking about flavor wise. Yeah, what's your what's your Tinder code, man? Let me know. I'm gonna log in real quick. <laughs> what is it? What'd you get? Oh man. Somebody hit me with another question here. I got 
I got. I'm just getting warmed up. <laughs> he actually sent. I don't know if it works. Like you just log into somebody else's. You know, like, oh yeah, let me check out these messages. What are you serious, guy? You talking about getting weird messages, right? I what? I just got a message on Reddit from a dude. Asking if I'm still selling some HK G3 mags because I had like 20 or something. That post has got to be like five years old, and this guy is asking me if I still have these, I still have these mags. Like, no, man. I probably sold them like four years ago. <laughs> oh, Jesus. A little late to the party there. Uh, looking is he looking for mags for his PTR? Because that's what this guy was doing. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I tried to do this at a later time to like include more people. I don't I, I, I it seems to have worked out a little better because at one point we had like eight <laughs> twelve dollars bro I remember when those mags were 97 cents and those were for like HK brand mags like those were for legit brand name magazines and I think it was either I think it was the aluminum ones aluminum 20 rounders yeah, they're like 97 cents and there was one you could get two mags and then a pouch and i think that whole setup was like 297 or something it's ridiculous that was with uh cheaper in the dirt before they started gouging the shit out of everybody during sandy hook oh nice yeah i need to I don't know. I probably need some more mags, but I'm not really sure for what. Definitely for the AK. My good old AKM. Yeah, cheaper than dirt was just Man, they they went they they dropped down to a low level at that point. Like just cuz a tragedy happened, you're going to start charging I think at one point it was like $80 a magazine for like a 30 round Magpul P mag. I was like, dude, I mean, hey, I'm all for capitalism. Don't get me wrong, but like, that's just straight up gouging and taking advantage of people. That's just wrong, man. Yeah, I don't order from them anymore, but a real good one to check out every once in a while is uh, Primary Arms. They're another Texas company. I just rep Texas a lot, sorry. But man, their shipping is like stupid fast. It's like stupid fast. Sometimes they got a uh, Anderson low receivers for like 20, 30 bucks. Pretty good deal. Flying, okay, security, I just saw your message. Oh, yeah, and you just put it in there. Flying with a pistol and ammo case. Yeah, I that that should probably be fine if you put a if put an air gun in a locked case. I don't see them really giving you too many. Six or seven mags for 50 bucks? It's not bad. I've been kind of moving away from the P mags, though. I'm not going to lie. i kind of been moving towards the Sure Feeds. Just been having like a lot of luck with those as of late oh and i just had to do a lot more exercise than i wanted to right there yeah maybe i should do i'm pretty sure like youtube is like no don't do this but i could do a giveaway for one of these Nice, nice 33 round magazine for a clock. Like, 
Like, how crazy does that look? It just looks over the top. I remember one time um, I went through a police qualification range and they're like, all right, you're going to need a total of 30 rounds. And I was like, they're going to like split it between two 15 round magazines. I was like, or not. <laughs> and I stepped up to the line with it in my holster. And it was like sticking out ridiculously far on my belt. And this deputy walked by and he's like, bro, what the fuck? And I was like, hey, man, he said 30 rounds. And he said, yeah, between two mags. And I was like, yeah, because all you have is 15 round mags. Get out of here. <laughs> you got to Yeah, but the thing is, man, when you have the 33 round magazines, right, it gives you a better grip. You can hold it like this. <laughs> that's That's how you do it. And then it kind of counterbalances it whenever you turn it sideways. You kind of got that because you got the, the weight of the slide. And you have the, the rounds kind of offsetting that. Really balances out when you're hanging it out the side of your old Cadillac. Yeah, you yeah, hold it like a hammer. I don't think that's what they meant when they said drop the hammer on them. Oh, man. The hood is a weird place, man. The hood is a very weird place. It still blows my mind, though. I'll like, I'll drive through our little, our little, our little hood. And, yeah, everybody there's like really nice most of the time, uh, unless their car gets beat up with a hammer, and they're usually pretty pissed. But like, you'll go through there and you'll see some rims right on a car that costs. Pfft, ten fifteen thousand dollars for a set of rims and then you look at the house it's parked in front of or the car that they're even on the car is like a three thousand dollar like 1999 crown vic <laughs> and the house is like got a tree growing through the living room window <laughs> you're like priorities bro what type of vehicle do i drive for a patrol actually i drive a uh, ford f-150 for a uh, patrol vehicle four wheel drive yeah dude the rims cost like 10 times the car it's it's insane oh you lived in the hood whenever i, I used to live in my old town uh yeah we lived kind of like in the area that was developing into the hood or devolving into the hood however you want to look at it that was interesting but you know like if you live there most of the time it's all right because like once they know you and they get to know you and stuff it's pretty good like people are nice to you and stuff but if you're an outsider be like they're like no you get out of here go come back to my neighborhood no more I was like damn you know I'm only here cuz uh this lady had a heart attack, now I gotta do a death investigation. <laughs> like, chill, bro. Ugh, yeah, eventually I want to get more into the private security side of things, though. And then, like, the instructor side of things. Kind of like, because then I can kind of make my own schedule and spend some more time at home. Unless I'm working security gigs and, you know, obviously I'm going to be out and about. Uh, how long have I been a police officer? Too long. <laughs> that's, that's one answer I can give. Um, since 2013, actually. But I say not consistently since 2013. 2013 is whenever I got my first commission as a police officer and actually still with the same agency I'm with now but uh, I took some contracting jobs like in between there and um, almost went back to the military actually in between there for military police but then I said no I got out of the military for a reason <laughs> it's because the leadership was shit and 
and my unit was trash and I was like if I would have re-enlisted then I would have been stuck in the same place and that was just not an option not an option but yeah so cumulatively been a police officer for a while actually I got something right around here oh hell my headphones I don't even know why I'm wearing headphones I don't have any audio going what the hell Where is it at? What branch of service? I was in the uh, United States Army. Amazing. Just, just trash. <laughs> nah, it was alright. I enjoyed my time. Made a lot of good friends. Got to go see a lot of cool places. Got to see a lot of shitty places. We have four people here and only three talking. I know, isn't that weird? There's some creeper in there that's just like watching from the shadows yeah but yeah that's kind of my my record there so I've been a peace officer well this is an old transcript this is uh, current as of January so let's see I have a total of six years and five months at this point I think it's six months how many training hours did I have my total amount of training education was 1,145 hours. <laughs> oh, God, I have no life. I don't know if Seth is still in here or not. I wish there was a way I could check. Is there a way I can check who's in here? Participants, look at that. Wow, there's not that many participants. Oh, wait, I think that's only people that are actually messaging. Think he's the creeper? He very well could be. You never know, he could be lurking in the shadows somewhere. Oh! <laughs> there he is, he shows himself. Oh, I was watching something ridiculous earlier. Oh, what is it? Let me see if I can. I'm gonna move this over here. <laughs> He's undercover. Don't bother him. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put my. I was watching this earlier. Not Mike Bloomberg. Hold on. Oh, you know what? I can actually switch it. Y'all can see what I'm seeing. A hey, technology. Right? So anyway, I was watching this. Hey, Skywalker's back. Oh, skip. Wait, cancel. Wait, back. Nope. Yeah. Right? What? Play. There we go. Wait a second. Why is there no audio? Ridiculous. I think it's this right here. Let's see if that does it. If someone takes his ranch, there Doug we go. Has to fall back to one of several shelters that he can live in temporarily. Tell me how crazy this dude sounds back. Like, this dude just sounds crazy. new build with the help of his friend and fellow prepper, Brian. So I'm excited to show you my little project I've been bragging to you about. 
This is a spider hole, dude. Yeah. The whole big area just. <laughs> no. <laughs> just, just no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh, uh. Underground for, uh, for me to live in. <laughs> It's right in the middle of the roadway, too. A spider hole is a combat term widely used in the Vietnam War. It is a camouflaged... Like, look, I'm all for prepping and stuff. Don't get me wrong. I, um... Uh, oh, do I watch Donut Operator? Hell yes, I watch Donut Operator. In fact, at one point, I also had a fantastic mustache. But now I'm more of like a goatee slash beard kind of guy. But yeah, I'm all for prepping. I'm all for getting stuff ready. I have like an entire office full of uh, stuff. And my patrol car has a bunch of stuff. Like in one of my videos, I did my bug out bag. That actually goes to work with me. Like I take it everywhere. And uh, people think I'm crazy. My boss is like, you're a smart son of a bitch. I'm going to do that too. So like he... Uh, he also has a bug out bag. He actually carries a flint and steel in his pocket everywhere. It's pretty crazy. I'm not even to that level yet. All I got is my monster ferro rod. I think it's a six inch ferro rod. Wild. But yeah, but this guy's nuts. One man foxhole, about three feet deep and seven feet long. Doug plans to use them to hide in plain sight for three to seven days at a time. This is where I would be at. Worst call I've ever had. Worst call was probably, I don't know if it was really bad, but it was like really jacked up. It was a white supremacist skinhead who just punched through a glass door, was profusely bleeding everywhere, and was trying to beat up like a 60-year-old man that has like liver cancer. Yeah, yeah, it was basically DV, yeah, domestic violence. And um, so, like, the female party ran out the house, ran over to the neighbor's house, which was ironically the fire chief. So he was, like, you know, providing aid to her and stuff and, you know, dealing with all that. So I was in there. I was trying – I was the only one on scene at that time. I was calling for backup, and my backup was, like, fucking 15 minutes out. And so – I went in there and uh, was trying to like call him out and I'm sitting there for like five minutes trying to uh, get the dude to respond so anyway finally get him out of the house and like the deputy that came to back me up like I'm covering him while he goes into handcuff and like we start talking to him stuff so I get into the house there is like it was like a horror scene like there was just blood everywhere apparently the dude was irate and was just like talking with his hands, you know, like swinging his hands back and forth and stuff, and it was just slinging blood over everything. And he had drank an entire bottle of Captain Morgan's rum. And and alcohol acts as a blood thinner. So man, his stuff was just like not clotting. Like his his bleeding was not stopping and he was just slinging that stuff. It was all over the woman. We thought she was hurt. She didn't have a hand, she didn't have a bruise or nothing on her. She was covered in his blood. I was like, bruh, this is some of the wildest shit I've ever seen. Like, you know, it really makes you start to question the human race. <laughs> You're just like, why? Why would people do this? Passed on some government. Oh, snap. <laughs> I did stuff like that in Germany. I like to, like... Uh, I don't know, what do you call it? Like urban, um, it's one of those things where you like urban adventure, like you explore kind of like buildings and structures and stuff. Ooh, get some more whiskey. Nice. Now he, okay. So in this video right here, this, this happy gentleman right here. He's saying he's going to live in one of these holes for three to seven happy, days. Uh, into the world. Home sweet home. There's probably a total of maybe 12 inches between his forehead and what looks like to be a pine log. And uh, that's going to be a no for me, dog. There's no way you can, like, cook water in that. 
there's no way you can comfortably not I, i'm not saying like at the end of the world if i'm trying to trying to hide you know it's going to be comfortable but for three to seven days if you're hiding from like an enemy force i'm gonna press doubt like that didn't give you a lot of capability to respond to things i don't know it's just it's gonna be a no for me dog Oh, that's hilarious, dude. Like, having the fireworks go off inside the car. Like, I would still take him to jail. That shit's hilarious. Yeah, you can't move or eat in there. Like, you could eat, but only if everything was within arm's reach. And think about it. Okay, so I think he said that this is about three foot deep, which, doubt, it does not look like it's three foot deep to me. And it's about seven foot long. What if you have a backpack? What if you have a rifle? Getting in and out of there with a rifle quickly is just going to be a no. Like, that's going to be a no for me. Dude, I would be dying laughing too. Actually, there's... Like, okay, so I did a video on... Like, an immigrant traffic stop I did, right? So, like... You know, pulled over somebody illegal and everything. I don't hassle people that are illegal over here. I know that's like a touchy subject, but if they honestly come over here to like do a better life for themselves and their family and stuff and don't commit crime other than being here illegally, I'm not going to hassle them. But man, like it can be tricky. It can be tricky. That doesn't yeah, it does not look deep. This dude's looking way too comfortable in this hole right here. Most important thing about this entire Oh hell no. Hell no wait. Most important thing about this entire Look at that flexing. That's flexing harder than like than Kanye West on there. Look lid, at that. Uh, has to be camouflaged to match the surrounding area. We're just going to add everything that's around here, all right? We got to make it look the same as, as everything. So all this dead grass that's through here, these little pieces of slate, we want to... That's going to be a no for me, dog. It's going to be a no. Oh, somebody's got their base bumping outside. Special, add, special. Add, we get, uh, you know, a good layer of dirt on here. And because Doug cannot predict which locations will be safe from the chaos. Yeah, you're gonna need a good layer of dirt to cover up that trash, that trash shelter you built. A potential economic collapse. He's taken the prepper rule of a plan B to a whole new level. This is just one in a network of spider holes built over hundreds of miles. This is, you know, um, my last resort. But this Anytime you say network, like a network of something, it sounds better or worse. Right? Like, this is a network of underground shelters that he has spread over hundreds of miles. Like, whoa, wow. Or you could say, he's got a couple of holes in the ground in different locations. <laughs> it doesn't sound nearly as, like, <laughs> intimidating. You say, like, hey, we have a pedophile. And you're like, all right, you got a pedophile. But you say we have a network of pedophiles. That's next level. Ah, oh, dude. Yeah, I don't know. I read some of those, like, Antifa things. I kind of follow some of those because I get a crack out of it. Like, man, I've had people tell me I'm, like, racist and sexist. And one guy even called me ageist. I did. I had to look that up. Apparently, that's whenever you, like, discriminate someone based on their age. Didn't really know that was a thing. And I was just like, dude, I know you don't know me, but I like literally have friends from like all walks of life and all types of people, man. You're just a piece of shit. That's why I'm like bothering you. Yeah, I know, man. Some people are like, like, that's one reason I'm trying to get back into private security or like some other uh, related job field 
is this job starts to make you somewhat jaded. Like that's if you let it get to you, you start to have it starts to impact your your view of the world, you know. And like I, I don't I just don't want to I just don't want to be that person, you know. Yeah, man, check it out. Like let me know what it's like. I'm I'm gonna be doing more camping stuff. Hell yeah, man. Go to that range. Go do some night shooting. Oh, I guess y'all got indoor ranges over there then. I have a pasture with a bunch of empty beer bottles. But yeah, man, absolutely. I'll try and get that out to you as soon as I can. Um, hopefully, hopefully tomorrow or the next day. And I'll try to get that out to you as soon as I can. I can imagine a big rattlesnake laying in there six months later. Yes, absolutely. What if somebody finds him in there and puts a big rock on the hatch? <laughs> what if the spiders want their holes back? Oh, man. How does he camo the lid when he's inside? Ironically, it's just big enough to be a casket. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, dude, that's so funny. The comments here are just gold, dude. Oh, here we go. The comments section on this is absolutely gold. <laughs> you would go crazy if you were in there for more than a day. Nah, maybe not crazy, but but not good. Jesus. If I remember correctly, this same guy was like teaching young kids survival methods and shit. Oh, damn. That's cool, dude. Yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to see some of that cool stuff. I mean, don't get shot or nothing, you know, but totally like Oh, goodness. Totally show me that. What? What? What is this? Oh, this is a commercial, but... Oh, God, I can't skip this commercial. Oh, sweet. Mad Dog sent you something? That's so cool, dude. I was hoping... Yeah, he hadn't done a video on, on the box I sent him yet, I don't think. Shoot, I gotta look. He hasn't uploaded in a minute, actually. Well, it's been a week. I guess he does stuff about once a week. Oh, what is this? Kevin Poole is prepping for an HEMP attack on the United States. See them spaghettios? For the past few years, he's been working on a super-sized prep to protect his large family. I've been working on uh, uh, building this shelter for the past two years in an undisclosed location not too far from my home. Our family's growing, so our shelter needs to grow. Yo, dog, how many wives he got? Is, these all, is all this his? Did he pay for all this? And actually built the three phases. Uh, the food storage is the first second a tunnel leading to another shelter and beyond that sleeping quarters with a generator kevin's underground shelter is essentially a large faraday cage 
A metal box, he thinks, will diffuse an electromagnetic pulse attack before it can destroy any electronics inside. It took him two years to finish the bunker's three-part skeleton in the shop, and now he is finally ready to put on the finishing details that he. It's kind of nice when you have your own company. Long-term underground survival. When you're inside of a shelter, even trash can be a threat. And when trash rots, it can cause health issues. So you want your air to stay healthy and clean. So you have to properly dispose of everything. That looks good. Let's go ahead and set it up there and see how it looks, all right? A family of Kevin's size will produce over 1,800 pounds of trash every 30 days, enough to fill the floor of the bunker a foot deep in less than a year. So Kevin is building a 10-foot-long trash chute to save his family from their own waste. Put all of your trash their in own here, waste. But it still has Talks like that. A residue of things that can rot and smell. So the idea is we have to make an airtight door here. It's insulated so it doesn't sweat be able to compact your trash hmm. and it has a ventilation hood in built inside of it with a blast valve because you have overpressure in your shelter as soon as you open the door overpressure takes over creates a venturi inside and starts to take the smell outward a venturi is a suction system and you really thought this through man in the bunker air flows from the large space into the it's narrow not, pipe forcing it's not that big though away from the living space a function that will be crucial if his family has to stay underground. Dude, he's only lucky he's got, like, homeboy here, you know, and everybody else It's like, I know what I'm doing. Five years later, his business has gone bankrupt. Yeah, no kidding. It's like he poured all his money into this. Like, don't get me wrong, dude. I want a bunker. Like, that'd be sick. There's a company here, here in Texas? There might be two. I think there's Atlas... And then there's Rising S Bunkers, and I heard Rising S Bunkers is not not good. But uh, Atlas is supposed to be pretty decent. Found literally from cradle to grave. There's a high rate of suicide in shelters. And I, I don't... Based on what study? <sighs> what? Shelters. And I, I don't... Grave. There's a high rate of suicide in shelters. And I, I don't know exactly what that statistic is, but uh, I understand it's on the high. There's not a statistic because there hasn't been a bunch of people living in, in, in shelters, my guy. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. So there's like the general rule of threes, right? So there's three seconds in a vacuum, three minutes without air, Three hours, like in hypothermic, hyper hyperthermic conditions, in extreme hot, extreme cold. Three days without water, three weeks without food, and three months in complete solitude. Like, not saying you're gonna die if you're completely by yourself for three months, but like you're gonna start having some mental issues and you're gonna start, um, not going crazy, but it's it's gonna affect the way you do things and handle things. So, so let me show you this trash tube. I'm gonna uh, explain that to you. Oh, and he's dragging his sister wives in there to check it out. Cute. You can see this is about ten foot. It's on a little bit of an angle. Anytime we're prepping, Amber would rather just not be here. She does. Shocking, absolutely shocking. My girlfriend's the same way. Doesn't want to be involved with <laughs> prepping. And I understand that. Actually, it's big, you know, and um, yeah. suicide rates kind of high in these shelters. Yeah, thanks for dropping that on me, sweetheart. I was really I'm thinking about killing myself a lot sooner now that you're talking to me. So we can stuff a body here. It's, it's, that's exactly what it's designed for, to be honest for with For a body. <laughs> it is. He kind of drives us all crazy because he's constantly thinking 10 steps ahead. If you had somebody pass away, if you don't do something with their body, you know, you're going to start Ran getting disease. We would all yeah. die. So it's actually built big. She's like, yeah, mm hmm, yeah, mm hmm. Yep, you're gonna be the first one in there if you keep talking. Enough for, for that if you need it. Yeah. Then you could sprinkle lime in there or whatever it might be. Oh, Jesus. I understand that it's, it's good that we have that, but. Well, that's, I, uh, that's real. All right, okay. I don't wanna talk about it though. <laughs> God damn it. What? Oh, shit. Oh my God. Man, I forgot what it. You know, when I was younger whenever this show whenever i like we had cable and whatnot 
and I watched shows like this, I was like, man, these guys are so cool. Like, they got their shit figured out. And then, like, going back on it now that I actually have knowledge in some of this stuff, I'm just like, bruh, why would you do this? Oh, what's this one? Jerry designed his bio fortress specifically to keep pathogens out. Bio fortress. Oh, I'm sold. Out. But he isn't just concerned about contaminants. He's also worried about people. Both. People are contaminants. Just saying. Entrances and exits have a man trap. So you have two sets of doors that you would have to actually go through to get into the core of the facility. All the doors are metallic and weigh uh, at least a thousand pounds. These doors. So obviously, by the type of this man's hat and his excellent selection and vests, he knows what the fuck he's talking about. Doors are all fire rated and isolate every man trap from the center core of the facility. This quit saying facility place is designed with incredible strength in the walls, the steel, all the concrete, it just overkill. And this is the core of the building right here, which is extremely sound. You have... You couldn't have picked a little bit classier sconce? Sconces are kind of weak, bro. Milwaukee by 11 points. Oh, shit. Pillars every 18 feet, which made an interesting design. Although Jerry has spent over $7 million Holy to make fuck. his home structurally sound, completely self-sufficient, and fully supplied with food and water, he has not limited his survival plans to the bare necessities. A lot of people buy gold and silver, but I invested heavily in toilet paper because everybody needs it. And... Uh, Makes life kind of rough if you don't have it. It's a better investment in the long. No wet wipes. <sighs> What's this guy's name? Jerry. Fucking Jerry. Run. In 2003, amid intelligence concerns about a biological attack, the U.S. government encouraged citizens to store duct tape and plastic sheeting for ceiling windows. Jerry devised a method he believes is more reliable. This is our sunroom. It's the only sunlight uh, in the complete complex. So when you get uh, claustrophobic, you can come in here and uh, unwind. This glass, it get offers shot. bullet resistance up to class three, 44 mag. And on top of that, it has Batman shutters that go down over the glass for extra protection. Yeah, it lives in Germany. We have biological Don't say complex equipment. one more time. Rad meters, chemical test kits. God to damn secure it. his bunker from airborne toxins, Jerry has built an ultraviolet radiation chamber, which he uses to filter all air coming into the facility. Now, okay, so UV filtration, I actually thought about getting that for my house because I hate allergies. Allergies suck. And uh, UV actually does a pretty good job. Pretty good job of killing that stuff. Yeah, those are hurricane. Guess those are hurricane shutters, Jerry. Get out of here. Can't lie to me. Can lie to everybody else watching TV, not me. The room also doubles as an emergency disinfection chamber. Fuck De me, Jerry. God. Just... Designed to eradicate deadly microorganisms that could be carried in. Oh, you actually have those on your AC? I'm like, did you install it yourself or did you like get it? Because I'm totally tempted on just installing one like on my intake. Just blasting that shit with UV radiation. This is the air handler room right through here where all air comes into the building. He had those switches specifically. He couldn't just get like regular ass light switches. He's like, hell no. I want some big flipper things. That, mm, man, that's got to I got to feel that kerklunk, you know, whenever I turn this shit on and off. You know it. Oh, they actually, inst okay, I don't think anybody around here does that. I'm probably going to have to do, like, my own thing. Because, uh, man, in the spring and stuff, oh, it just kills me. 
Oh, she's getting in. Jerry's going in, guys. These vents control the outside air. If we expect it. The cameraman is fucked. They are both in there, and they're both going to die. You see this shit? These vents control the outside air. If we expect oh, this is it. event or no have detected an event. This is it, Jerry. These go closed. They're all sealed with rubber seals against steel. It keeps all pollutants, our uh, toxins outside. Ah, uh, uh, it was nice knowing you, Jerry. I really admired your hat. Bugs, if they sneak in, once the emergency ventilation systems are shut down, uh, they'll be incinerated inside the UV chamber. Do you have a spare hat in case it gets infected? This is where it happens. Right here. Oh my god. Uh, why? Is there more of this? Oh boy. Okay, so I used to work at a prison, right? And I knew a guy that forced his children and wife to eat like possum and rats and sometimes raw so they could get used to it in case you know the end of the world ever came that they would be that they would be accustomed to it already and i'm like no bro you know is that a vest or is that a is that a is that a poncho I like how he's got the nice dong flap right here. Yeah, who's who's all in here? Let me look at these participants. No one can hide from me. Oh shit. I can't see. Because oh. the Douglas More whiskey. live on a farm that produces food and have four hundred gallons of water caches. That's Michael not a lot. They could become a target in an overpopulated world. Four hundred so gallons of water ain't shit. Very own alarm system. To warn them of danger. <laughs> I have an alarm system that tells me when to stare stoically off in the distance. <laughs> it works wonderfully. World. Watch. So he has developed his very own alarm system to warn them of dangerous marauders in search of provisions. Out here in the rural areas, people are going to be spilling out to to take what farm. Does it say main vodka? I swear to God, it's his vodka. Farmers have. I'm not going to allow my family to be a target. I've had the opportunity. They can have the younger children, but not the older ones. I need them for labor. To play with thermal imagery cameras, motion detectors, um, early detection systems of all kinds. You know what I use? Bird feeders. Birds alarm at the most subtle of threats. I left the dirt on the drum. <laughs> what if I kill your birds first? What's this guy's name? Subscribe. His name is Subscribe. Michael Patrick Douglas. Of course he has three first names. Why not? Threats. By listening to the bird alarms, you have awareness of people approaching. Every bird produces a different sound, and each of their calls communicates a Yeah, they're all Jerry. A language Michael has studied for over two decades. Ah, oh, no, Michael, no. And is now passing on to his children. This one's saying, uh, get a life. <laughs> What's that? Nuthatch. What's, <laughs> What's this one? A nutsack. <laughs> Today, Michael is teaching Emily about the importance of the robin's distress call, which he believes could give the family a full five minutes to prepare for any approaching danger. All right, this one's not out, but tell me what it is, because it's really important. Ready? No! No! No, Michael. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. Oh, no. Oh. No. No. Oh my god. Oh shit. Oh my god. I got I got to go pee before I piss myself. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Yeah, he pulled some Hunger Games shit. That's what that is. 
Oh, Michael, no. Oh, God, I'll be right back. Dude, oh god. I didn't even watch all of like Doomsday Preppers, but holy shit do I want to now. Oh god, I'm afraid to hit play. I don't know what's coming next. Lama's alarm? Yeah, know that one. That means <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Know that one. Somebody's oh coming with a lot of angry energy, okay? Um, oh, what? Oh, shit. The family a full five shit, shit, to shit. For any shit. Danger. Shit, I'm watching it again. Tell me what it is because it's really important. Ready? Lama's alarm? Yeah, know that one. That means somebody's coming with a lot of angry energy, okay? Um, when you have a kid who can hear that 300 yards away in the din of society, their awareness is amped. Most preppers stock up fucking amped up on firearms for self-defense. <laughs> Michael stores stores positive energy that he focuses in a concentrated beam towards his enemies. But Michael does not possess guns. He believes that overpopulation would cause ammunition to become a finite resource. Hey, P701. Yeah, I I never watched this episode, so I'm not 100% sure, but boy, am I talking shit right now. I mean, granted, probably knowing some of these skills and stuff. Like, I talked to crows in the Walmart parking lot, and I'm like, sup, dog? You enjoying that corn dog you found? Like, I talked to them, but, you know, they don't talk back. It's because they're black crows and I'm white, but I'm just kidding. But no, this, this I'm thoroughly enjoying myself right now. Why? <laughs> Watch, watch this. Good God. And he does not want to be dependent on it. You don't need to rely on bright, shiny objects like knives and other you know, guns. Instead, you get to focus that positive energy right through their fucking skulls at 300 meters. Plug into the landscape to see what he can offer you. Instead, his lethal weapon of choice is made simply from an oak tree and a railroad spike. Yeah, get it. Nice. Other side. Wow, that's actually really good. That's a good shot, Just bro. Take it and chop it right to the base of the head. Boom. Dakota has. Oh shit! You know he's popular at school. Or like, Dylan, show me your hatchet skills. Just throwing tomahawks for over seven years, and he also has more. <laughs> Great value, Larry Vickers. <laughs> he's like, we're gonna watch these Russians shoot themselves in the chest. <laughs> Wait till he makes his kids eat bugs. No shit. No shit? Oh, no shit. Frustrating. Get it. Today, Michael is combining both of these skills to teach Dakota. He's like, you're going to want a dual wheel. It's more intimidating. Dakota, a new tomahawk technique that he could use to fight potential invaders. He's using them like fucking Tonkas? Right? Guiding you around. Boom. You're holding the blades. And now you have your, your blocks, your strikes. Oh my god, I was right. He's going straight up. We can side handle baton or talk as get it. Just remember, lethal, hold the blade, non lethal. Alright? <laughs> Sharp metal blade, lethal, wooden stick, less lethal. Good <laughs> Good Good tip, Dad. Good 
<laughs> Couldn't have figured that one out without you. Thank God you're here to pass on your knowledge. Oh God, I wish this taser worked. I'd shoot myself right in the chest right now. This is crowd control, escape. This is. I watched some interpretive dancers one time, and regardless of how attractive they are, I thought they were all on drugs. Is there's nowhere else to go but life or death. Your sister and brother are too young. Don't share that stuff with them. See, I told them, dude, I told them, you can take the young ones, the old ones, I've already put, I've invested too much, too much positive energy. One day I hope to uh, be as good as he is, if not better. Although the, <laughs> instead of crowd control, for like population control. Oh shit, Dylan's about to get it. Hold on, guys. This he is, if not better. Although the tomahawk is the most dangerous weapon Ah, oh, fucking get it, storm, Dylan. It is not the only one. Like a Does anybody else think those bangs are gonna get in his eyes though? Whenever he's trying to like do some uh, teenage mutant ninja turtle attacks. True prepper, Michael always has a plan B. This is as powerful as a shotgun. Really try to take out one of these targets. A throwing stick is a handmade wooden tool with a sharpened. Oh. Watching this guy hurt, like this. This hurts my brain. Still feeling the dong cover on his shirt right here, though. It's, it's tasteful, Michael. It's tasteful. And when thrown sideways, it is an effective hunting weapon for small game, such as rabbits. Sidearm, just like a martial arts punch. It's the spinning action of this stick that, when it hits, creates all that force. Yeah, Dylan, yeah. To tone it down, bro. Tone it down, man. He's getting stalled at Tang, man. I want I want him to have a front mullet. I want him to have like the hair just hangs down in the front and it's all just the rest of it's just shaved. I need that. Yeah, Jerry was an OG. Alright, go ride your bike. <laughs> Shit, hold on, what? No, I'm good. Alright, go. Did you see? Look at that fucking disappointment. That's a disappointment. Dylan. <laughs> Columbine Dylan right here. He's had enough of your shit. He's about to take out his little brother. He's like, don't worry, Dad. I'll do it. YouTube blocked you? Holy shit. I wonder if YouTube's going to be blocking a lot of my people just because uh, it's getting pretty savage. He has headphones and a bike. He's like, Dad, it's it's 2020. I want to go to Walmart. I'm tired of squirrels. But look at this. Uh, it's just pure disappointment. All right, go ride your bike. Get out of here, you piece of shit. Everybody needs this. He's in his eyes. He's like, what a fucking scrub. Get out of here. Who doesn't want their children to come home alive? Well, I know one that you don't want to come home alive. <laughs> but for Michael, offensive training is not enough. He wants his kids to be ready for danger at any moment, whether they have a weapon or not. So he conducts self-defense drills every day, multiple times a day, and often without warning. My kids are in there playing right now, so what I want to do... Yeah, send them that Tinder code, bro. Is, uh, give them kind of an awareness drill. You know, this is how they start to evolve their skill sets. So, with that in mind, let's go have some fun. Oh, he's gonna go shoot. He's no, you gotta get the one that's a disappointment, bro. Oh, and there's a German flag. Thought I wouldn't notice. Oh, Jerry. Yeah, no, dude, it's Call of Duty Friendly Fire's turned on, bro. Friendly Fire's turned on. So this is like one of those movies where the bad guy talks too long and like he could have just shot at the door and the movie would have been over in five minutes. You do. That's right. Okay. Break his spine. Okay. Break his spine. Gunga, gunga. Fucked. Wait. Wait, guys. Wait. What do you do? Both hands. Both hands. Bro. There is no pussy left on earth. Dylan dual wields fucking tomahawks and he plays acoustic guitar. 
That's it. That's it. There's nothing else we can do, guys. It's set in stone. What? Oh my god. Heads up. We detected copyrighted audio and video in your stream. Your stream may be temporarily blocked. You guys are lame, YouTube. You need to chill. Oh, dude. Yeah, 100% Oasis going on right here. There's some Oasis Wonderwall. Cause that gets the girls. That gets bitches, bro. She's like, pew, pew. Not bad. She's like, wow, you're way better than Jared over here. I get moments where people think that I'm crazy or... Uh, you can stop right there, Jerry. Too far gone all of the time. Is it all worth it? Yeah. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Ugh. All right, boys, let's go. We're going on vacation. Come Ugh. This hurts, guys, but I'm going to watch it. Come on, help me out. Let's go. Work together. Come okay, on. no, no, I can dig the Alice packs, actually. You know where the mother is? She left a long time ago. <laughs> She's like, oh, I saw the signs. They were not good. Good job, good job. I feel a lot safer because we are totally prepared and we'll be ready for anything. Good job, Trey. You know, actually, are some like grade A preppers, like some really good at prepping people? Mormons. It's like in there. Holy shit, how much stuff does he have in this truck? Holy fuck. Is this like a Mrs. Baird's bread van? Jesus. The drills are for so if anything bad does happen, that we do it like clockwork and it gets done fast. Let's go, Rich. Oh, nice. Our motto is to. I don't think he's doing anything fast, guys. You see them eyes? It's a great A stoner right there. He ain't doing so shit. Oh, nice. Our motto is work and it gets done fast. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah, he, he's not allowed to stick his head out the window because that truck would straight take off. Fast. So rich. Oh, nice. Our motto is to travel fast and travel light as quickly as we can and get. Hey, wait, does this guy look like a cheap, um, shit, what's his name? Dude, Alec Baldwin, yes, straight up, dude, it's fucking Alec Baldwin. <laughs> hold up, hold up, Alec, <laughs> oh my god, yes, oh, shit. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh my god, I can't take this shit. I'm crying. I can't take this shit serious. <laughs> Oh my god. Get away from a populated area. That yeah, it's gonna be hard with a bunch of groupies following you. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay, Rich, guide me in. Trey, get in the truck. The plan is to get his entire family to the Wait, you're gonna pull that with a Jeep? That gear Trey system is timing. not meant for right, uh... it. Bridge, you know, timing is everything when it comes to uh, this bug out evacuations. How are we doing on time? We're about 20 minutes into it. Uh. All right, Ridge, we are officially here. Stop the clock. What do we got? We got 34.49. Okay, so now we just need to figure out where he lives, and then anything within a 35-minute radius driving distance is probably where his shit's at. Fantastic. We made our best. That's our best time. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that for TV. Once there, Tim and his sons build up their prepping skills by practicing tactical shooting. Lock and load. He's like, thanks, Dad. This is the one I was looking for earlier to take to school. <laughs> we train as often as we can out in the desert. There's no restrictions. Dude, like this guy has level. more Alice packs than a fucking 1980s surplus store. Fuck is this? 
who just lays out shotgun shells like that. Look at this. Be crazy if that grinder right there just turned on and sucked in one of those straps to start chewing his shit up. But I digress. Out in the desert, there's no restrictions like you would have in a gun club. So we're able to do more real life situation shooting. All right, so what we're gonna do, uh, balloons are gonna represent a good guy and a bad guy. All right, the bad guy is the red guy. You don't have a thread protector for your shit? Ah. Ah, just drop it. Just drop it. Get just chew one of those threads up and then watch your concentric threads go down the drain and any suppressor you put on there get chewed to shit. Nice shot. Go, go, go. Get him, get him, get him. My stream is no longer being blocked due to copyright issues. What? YouTube, you are seriously something else, man. You're just you're like man. Nah, he's, that's Jerry's protege right there. Again. Nice shot. Imagine they're the heads of your classmates. So it teaches them to fire under pressure and to fire accurately. Yeah, fucking... <laughs> Who needs sights? Who needs any form of sights whenever you're just laying waste to everything? You, you, you go, Dylan, number two. God damn it. Just stop growing into the gun. Uh, lean into it, kid. Yeah, lean into it. Stop chicken winging so much. Otherwise, you're going to fuck those threads up. That guy I'd have behind me any day. My dad um, is out there, and he's kind of different. He Detected copyrighted audio and video. You, I'm trying to have some fun here, and you're, you're killing me here. YouTube, you're just you're killing me. Dude, for real, like, go ahead and pull your P90s out, you know, or your MP7s. Go ahead and, go ahead and pull out your Zat. Oh my god, it's literally blocking my stream because of copyright. That's so dumb. So how long is temporarily like temp temporary? I can't have no fun, bro. Oh, look, we're back. YouTube keeps blocking me for copyright issues, probably, because I keep... I wonder if there's any, like, why? 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 I just want to watch children shoot targets without any iron sights or thread protectors. I can't have any fun here all that prepping and then he shoot holy shit does he shoot himself what if i block the audio does he fucking shoot himself dude oh my god yes Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna risk copyright striking because the unexpected can happen. What happened? <laughs> oh, here we go, guys. What happened? Damn thing uh, just misfired on it. Get the truck up and ready. He's gotta go to the hospital. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Tim? Tim? Tim. Uh, are you kidding me? Stream unavailable. <laughs> He's got... No, you're right. He's going into some dick right now. Are you... It's blocking me again. You gotta be shitting me. I can't 
can't play it for like three seconds without. <sighs> Redonkulous. Redonkulous. But Homeboy here looks like he's straight up dying. <laughs> Dude, you caught like a little bit of frag or something, man. Yeah, what a little, sh little bitch. Oh, man. Man, that's a lot of whiskey. Ugh. Fine, then, YouTube. I'll watch something else. Thanks, YouTube. Dude, like, how does it know? How does YouTube just know? Hmm. What's something else we could watch that's not copyright infringement? Apparently. Still can't believe that dude looks straight up like a knockoff Alec Baldwin. That's hilarious. Beretta, what'd you just send? Yeah, yeah, I know. They've been uh, copyright infringing, like hitting me left and right with crap. It's so stupid. It's like every time I start playing a video, they're like, mm-mm, how dare you? Bob Ross, The Joys of Painting. That's true. It is PBS. Actually, I listen to uh, public radio all the time because they don't like hype shit up. God, I can't believe they cut, like, my stream all the time. That's so lame. Yeah, I'm on, like, drink number... F number something. Ugh. Can I watch my own stream? Holy shit. Something. I can. Oh, this is gonna get weird. Ugh. Can I watch my own stream? Holy shit. I can. Oh, this is going to get weird. So you guys are watching a stream about a stream for a stream. So you guys are watching a stream about a stream for a stream. Uh, so many mice on the screen. So many mice on the screen. Okay, we're not doing that. That's just gonna get way too weird. Oh, let's see. God, dude, everything's everything's gonna be like copyright. Let's. What is that? Oh, it's D. Snyder. Oh, there's Larry Vickers right there. We were just talking about Homeboy. Oh, man. Here, somebody ask me a question. We'll do that. Play the question game. That's not copyrighted, is it? You bastards. Yeah, Jerry's on his way. We got the special Jerry forces 
en route. Dude, Larry Vickers kind of is. He kind of like is the Guy Fieri of, of the gun world. It's just like, dude, hold on. What was one of his videos that we watched? Da -na 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 -na. Still says my stream is unavailable. Uh, is it trading? Oh, fucking Russians, man. Hmm. Hold up. I'm about to screw up. I gotta play the video so you guys can see it. And pretty standard stuff, you know, not too bad. Okay, shooting past each other, all right. Okay, wait a second. Hold up. Hell no, hell no, bro. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Bruh. Okay, so what I have in the, uh, the glass here is the uh, Balcones Texas Single Malt Whiskey. And it is a 64.2% alcohol by volume. Texas made whiskey and it's it's probably my favorite so far pretty delicious pretty good stuff well, I'm pretty sure I know who the people are that shot out my windows but uh yeah they're I don't have enough evidence to prosecute them so it's kind of shitty but yeah let's watch this dude get shot again Okay, this, th I, th these guys, okay, this guy, hell no, hell no, that's Jerry, that's their Jerry, right there. Homeboy comes up for a headshot. Ooh, see, putting pressure on that in, on that inguinal right there. They're putting pressure on that uh, femoral artery. I think he's gonna strap that little tourniquet right there. And this this guy's like, look, man, you're on my nuts after I got shot twice. Yeah. We got a nice Israeli bandage here. That's pretty good. What is this shit underneath this? Pan I, was, I guess that's their thermals. Some Russian MP5s right there. <laughs> These people are crazy as hell, man. I gotta give it to Russians. You know they're all drunk as shit, probably. What a waste of cinder blocks. God damn it, they gotta get some Call of Duty shit going on. Oh, 
Russians, man. Why, Russia? You know, they're all using Glocks and shit, too. It's just like... Thought you guys didn't like everybody. No, you'll use the Glock. Okay. Hey, he's getting... He's bagging that, bro. Straight up. Vaping Carolina Reaper juice. Oh, let's do it. Ah. Uh. On fire. Bro, I bet. I bet they are. Don't do it again. <coughs> uh, 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 <laughs> bro, no. <laughs> Stop. Made me choke up now, oh, bro. What the fuck? Oh, God. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Like, why would you do that? Oh, oh that makes me hurt, dude. Oh, he's back. Oh, I can't do that. I guess once you've done meth, though, it's just kind of like, just kind of like whatever, you know? Yeah, I mean, hell, it's more than I got, you know, can't, can't hate. Whew, God, that made my chest hurt. Man, I was eating pizza the other day, and I had a bunch of uh, Frank's hot sauce on there. Like, I accidentally, like, snorted. While I was like eating the pizza and I inhaled like just a shitload of Franks and pizza grease. Whoo. It's a bad day, my friend. That was a, that was a, twas a bad day for mankind. No, no, no. Oh, God, my chest still hurts from that. Jesus Christ. Let's see. This is all my training stuff I looked at. That was just crazy. I don't. That's not for training. That's just. That's just for shock value. If anything. Favorite pizza. Um. Gosh, what's that? It's not Capolini. It's um. Uh, Cabarera some shit like that it's basically like pepperoni with onions and hot peppers jerry cuz where at we see jerry's cuz at I need, a, I need a chair. Oh. 
Oh, I'm gonna tell you right now. My next uh, my next giveaway is gonna be at 556. It's 556 subscribers. Cause you know, like five, five, six. Damn, I should have done it at 223. Speaking of which. I got 253. Look at that. That's, that's pretty dang nifty. That's pretty cool. I can say I'm pretty happy with how that went. Oh, this one's really thorax indicating the need for a needle decompression. Stab or when a this casualty motherfucker. has significant torso trauma or primary blast injury and one or more of the following severe or progressive respiratory distress. Severe or progressive tachypnea. Absent or markedly decreased breath sounds on one side of the chest. Hemoglobin oxygen saturation. Yes, because I always carried that in the field with me. Less than 90% on pulse oximetry. Shock or traumatic cardiac arrest without obviously fatal wounds. Use a 14 or 10 gauge three and a quarter needle and catheter set. Bruh. And identify Don't actually stab this guy. Site. <laughs> Our site is the second intercostal space, mid clavicular line just lateral to the nipple. Palpating the clavicle, we know the first rib lies just under that. We have the first intercostal space, the second rib, That's the future second right there. intercostal space, and the third rib. I'm gonna use the third rib as a backboard, and then I'm going to ride over that third rib Bruh. and advance the catheter and needle set into the pleur space. Once I pop through the pleur space, I'm gonna advance the catheter until it is flush with the patient's skin. After inserting the needle, hold it in place for five to ten seconds to allow for decompression, and then remove the needle. They got some poor private for that, <laughs> like some some e e two. All right, come here, private. I need you to lay down this table. I'm gonna stab you with this fucking needle in the chest, just for, not because you need it, just because it's for demonstration purposes. <laughs> Oh, dude, the quick IOs. Oh, dude, I had to give one to a guy one time, right? Like, for training? I never used one in the field, but they're like, yo, who wants to give a quick IO? And I was like, oh, dude, I'll do it. And then they're like, who wants to volunteer? And this, like, dumbass Marine was like, yo, I'll do it. And I'm like, oh, yes, I get to stab a Marine in the chest. It's like the best day of my life. I'm like, man, those ten needles just, like, clack <laughs> right in his chest. And then I, I drew some of the marrow out, and I'm like, how you feeling, bro? He was freaking out, man. Like, I was freaking out internally. Jesus Christ, dude. Like, that, those quick eyes, I mean, they work, don't get me wrong, but Jesus Christ, that's some brutal-ass shit. Oof. Y'all want to see some femoral bleeding? I'm just going to show a little bit because it's pretty jacked up. That's some femoral ass bleeding right there. Yeah, but that's some of the stuff I have in my class. Yo, what? I need that truck, dude. Look at all that shit that's in there. You guys ready for some more Inception? <laughs> Just kidding, we're not doing that. Let's see. One feminist Oh Jesus. That's a bait truck if I ever seen one. I'd be like, yo. Let me just hop in the back of here real quick.
yeah, my, my YouTube is pretty weird because, man, I watch some weird shit sometimes. Oh, hey, um, security. Actually, right here, Canadian Prepper. It's definitely a, a channel that you should follow. This is like a Canadian dude that talks about all kinds of shit. And that's, it's actually like a really good dude to follow. I would highly recommend that. Also, um, Tactical Rifleman, really good one. And then Fieldcraft Survival. Those dudes are pretty dank. Those are pretty, some pretty cool dudes. Oh, let's watch some police shootouts. Are you there? Yes. Okay, what's going on? Well, there's this Mexican fellow, Hispanic fellow. I can't hear you at all. It was. Well, I don't. Uh, generally do like kind of like a standard field sobriety test. We don't actually have a test for marijuana just yet because Texas was like totally super unprepared for that shit. <laughs> So, like, we, uh, I usually call, like, what's called a DRE, which is a uh, drug recognition expert, which in our case is one of the state troopers. Call him over, and he does, uh, like, his little evaluation, whatever, and then he tells us what he thinks is going on, and we kind of go off of that. Are you at the Central? Yeah, and this guy is headed, he, he now walked down to Central Avenue, he's headed north for drive. He's got a backpack and a full of beer. He's had a few too many. Okay. I don't know where he was. He must be <laughs> down here now. Do you know what he's wearing? I'm pretty sure everybody's drunk oh, now. Gray, gray. It's about two people. Oh, shit. When you see a van parked like that, it ain't normal. Homeboy rolling a spliff right there. <laughs> yeah, don't move at all. Oh no, I'm sorry about that. Let me lower down the music. No, my car, uh, my car just died out. I don't know if it's not the gas or the battery. Right here? Yeah. And I'm kind of <laughs> right here up against this tree. That's that's weird, bro. Wait, yo, this guy's name is Deputy Thong. <laughs> yes, man. Train, train, train. I'm gonna need you to just chill the fuck out for like. Ah. You done? Are you done, Mr. Train? Okay, that's what I thought. Skip to 55 seconds. All right. Uh, yeah, so I'll just uh, kick. Yeah, he's still walking down Central, just about to the drive. Okay. All right. We'll go check for him. Okay. Thank you. Did he? I can tell his backpack was full of beer. It's a blue van across from seventy-two forty. You would drive. Ten four. Ten four. Oh, not on this one. I was like, right. How you doing, man? Yeah. And I'm kind of stuck without a phone, right? Okay. Yeah, so I was just uh, kicking back, waiting until I, I see someone pass by so I could call. Deputy Thong. Thong. It's my favorite. ID? Yeah. But my I'm new hero. Uh -huh. Joseph Corral out of L.A. Never met you before, man. You not from here? Oh, yeah, I am from here. I you are? This was L.A. You think this is L.A.? Yeah. <laughs> you think this is L.A.? <laughs> This looks like LA, dude. Yeah, that's that's that famous theater over there, and then over here we got the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Not LA. This is not LA. Did you post a link? Should we speak with him for a second? What's going on, man? Can you post it again? I don't Good. see it. What are you doing over here? Uh, yeah, like I was telling your friend, uh, my car battery. Yeah, they're all wearing vests. Or I ha and I have no gas. So I was in waiting, so I could call someone. You here seeing anybody or not? No, no, no. 
No probation for anything like that? No, no, no. You sure? No, no, no. No probation? Yeah, you're in a really bad spot, dude. Huh? You're in a really bad spot. Yeah. He's in a really bald spot. It's really, that's not very nice to say, Deputy Thong. Some people are very self-conscious of that. Yeah, the car Ooh. died out Close in. there, and then I had someone help me put it over here, so uh, I was in a bad spot. Gotcha. It's like, yeah, do your thing, man. You just, you just keep doing you, bro. I'm just gonna stand in traffic. Is that car turned off, boss? Will you mind taking the keys no, out for me real quick? Not. You mind just taking the keys out? Thanks. Yeah. What's this car pulling over for? I thought, that, uh, thought there was a 647F dude walking by. Say he thought there was a six and a half foot guy walking? That's a big motherfucker. I thought, that, uh, thought there was a 647F dude walking by. How'd you get to here? Yeah, I had a woman help me push it Push it like this? Are you visiting someone? Or... Oh, no. Okay. Uh -uh. How much do you have to drink today? How much you had to drink? Not a lot. Not enough. I'll tell you that. How much did you drink today? Okay, just do it. Just do what the fuck you gotta do, man. Yeah, well, how, how much did you drink? Just do what the fuck you gotta do. Okay, so you didn't drink anything? Man, nah. Just... <laughs> do what the fuck you gotta do. Alright, uh, come outside the big man. <laughs> this is why you shouldn't get loud exhaust, everyone. You, 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 you break up the audio on some cool shooting shit. Oh, did they? Yeah, because I'm not seeing any of the links you posted, man. YouTube's kind of shifty like that. Hey, hey, hey! Don't reach! Road, don't reach! Oh, I hope this is this officer shooting, because if it's one of these guys to the right, man, that is way the fuck off. Hey, hey, hey! Don't reach! Road, don't reach! that kid in the back mommy i'd be like oh hell where's dylan with the tomahawks I see you. Hands up. Hands up. I got you. wait did he get in the back seat somehow they didn't flip him off <laughs> i said like, fuck you dude oh my god <laughs> hold up Oh my god, dude. Dude, glass breaks funny when you shoot it, man. It, Especially tempered glass, like side windows. You think it should fall in, but it's, it, it's generally curved, so it, it likes to, like, fall out. Don't mind me. Hey, hey, hey! Don't reach! Road, don't reach! Oh, that crossfire, bro. Wait a second. That officer was still on the other side when he started lighting him up. Wait for it. Hey, hey, hey. Don't reach. Road, don't reach. Get away, don't get away. Get this officer's like, Shots fired. Shots fired. Shots fired. Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> I see you! Hands up! Hands up! I got you! <laughs> oh my God. I'm not laughing at the dude getting shot. 
But I'm laughing at this dude just like flipping off the officer. He's like, put your hands up. And he's like, I'm complying, but also fuck you. <laughs> uh, that's funny, dude. Uh. Hey, ma'am, run! Ma'am, get back! She's injured, fuck. She's... I'm... Is she okay? Get her! Oh, fuck, dude. Dr hey, get out of the van now! Get him fucking out. There's someone injured back there. Back to there. Get back! Get out, bud! Walk! Slowly! Slowly come out of the van! Oh, I'm about to read this. Wait, there's nothing? How what? And Deputy Thong is definitely a poor name if I ever saw one. <laughs> Wait, they pull a taser? Hell yeah. That's it. We're getting him for <laughs> criminal damage. Don't fucking reach for that gun! Reach! I can't hold the gun while I'm flipping you off, officer. Slowly open the door! Do not fucking reach for that gun! Do it. Get fucking shot. Again. Bro, look at that right there. Come out the window. Come out the window. Come out the window just, now. Just drop, bro. Just go ahead and just bloop. Do not fucking reach that gun. And you will be shot. On the ground. On your that's, a, that's a big boy now. right there. You're coming out. <laughs> Taser, taser, taser. Taser, taser, taser. Hit him. Hit him with the taser, bro. Hit him, hit him, hit him. <laughs> Get shot ten times. Pulls out the taser. He's like, oh, fuck no. <laughs> Fucking face. Get now. Keep coming out. Taser, taser, taser. Taser, taser, taser. Hit him. Hit him with the taser, bro. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Make sure nobody else can have you. What a shit show. Yeah, what a shit show indeed. Dude. You alright? Yep. Are you, you shot? Right? Are you shot? No, I'm not. Okay. Where's that gun? You got some five right. one to <laughs> The gun's got a gun, shoot it! Are you hit, bud? Find that gun real quick, bud. Find that gun. Oh wait, is that the one where like an LAPD officer like straight up shotguns a dude point blank in the face in a hostage situation? Because if so, I've watched that so many times and I love it. You guys, some kind of start medical, have them stage. That's the firm. Central turns into Yuva. Taser deployed. Shots fired, shots fired. Gonna need medical at this location. Go ahead and roll additional units and a supervisor. Uh, yeah, taser deployed as well. You know, just go ahead and mark that for reference. <laughs> Holy crap. So you said shotgun flare, you say. Shotgun forward-looking infrared. Oh, is this one? Is this first one? You gotta help me out here, brah. Sick. All right. Continued straight through. Continued straight through the next intersection. I can't look over the map. I gotta say, man, mid two thousands, whack. Yeah, but we're continuing uh, in that same direction. You're gonna have to help me with the streets here. If you can. Yeah, try. It's still Judson. And we're on Judson, still southbound, skidding to a stop. Uh, stamp. <laughs> yeah, going to have medical stage. It's like uh, 1466 SO. It's like SO, go ahead. It's like 1466, have a fire rescue asking if it's clear to come in. You know, just make sure it's safe and everything. It's like, yeah, we shot them 10 times and deployed the taser. They're good to come in. Fine here. Looks like you're getting ready to bail. Heads up, guys. Bailing. Again, we're getting ready to bail. Okay, passengers out, cars rolling. We're gonna stick with the passenger. You guys, hot stop that guy, the car, the driver. Good, stop the driver. Hit him with the car. Oh man. 
Okay, the guy, he's running through the house, jumping the fence, through the shotgun, threw something out. Grabbing the shotgun. Don't go over that fence. Don't go over that fence. Grab the shotgun again. Okay, he's running oh, he westbound through the yard, going to the back. He is armed. Stay there. Hold your position. Canine unit. End of the street. He's at the northeast corner, of the northwest corner of that house. I guess he has he's armed. wearing a blue shirt, dark colored pants. Down. According to the driver, the other guy has the gun. <laughs> shot fired. Just one single shot. Holy shit, man, San Diego! I got some, I got some wacky yeah. shit. Okay, Abel, 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 he just killed himself. He shot himself. Units, be careful going around that corner. But uh, might as well start at eleven forty-one. <laughs> Damn. Okay, let's keep the air here for the hot stop. How's the hot stop going? Advise on the hot stop. You want to go color camera? Damn. Good stuff. What else we got here? The dog pees right next to the body at 2.15. Jesus. Guy with shotgun-induced headache. Jesus Christ, bro. What else we got here? What do we have? Let's look at an endless amount of videos. Oh, I say that and it's the end. Damn, that's crazy, dude. I'm gonna save that one to... Um, I'll save that for my class. That'd be a good one. <clears throat> Damn, that's crazy. In many parts of the world, rice is the main grain. In fact, it is a food staple for nearly half of the planet's population. Native to Asia, it has been grown and consumed for thousands of years. But today, machines do much of the harvesting and processing in order to feed the enormous demand. I love that rice. These perfectly formed grains of rice are essentially the seeds of a crop that has been growing for about 150 days. Machinery strips it from the stalks and also suctions out some of the empty husks. Saved his 15 Trucks minutes. Trucks transport the rice to storage sewers. The grates to these sewers also help to filter out some of the larger stalks and debris. Like body parts. Look at that sweet, a chain sweet conveyor rice. moves the rice up to storage cylinders and into warehouses. Inside these storage facilities, a lone employee is tasked with counting each grain of rice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, security. Once I'll see you later, man. Once the rice is counted, it's on to the processing plant. The hell's that? A probe vacuums up samples of the truckload of rice. This rice being processed today is called front rice.
The rice is transferred to a sifting pan to screen for bugs. The right balance of bugs is a very important part of every harvest of rice, with about one bug carcass to every 2,000 rice grains. Too little bugs, and the rice won't taste right. Too many bugs, and customers will take notice and complain. Next, the rice falls through perforations in rolling cylinders, screening out the straw which will later be sold as potato sticks. The next machine sifts the rice into sorted piles, arranging them from diet to extra chunky, as seen here. <laughs> the rice is then sheared between two rubber rollers to remove the husks. This process is done behind the safety of... Oh my god, Peter, what the hell are you doing? You could have killed us all, Jesus. The rice and empty husks then cascade into another machine for sorting. This is a demo version of the actual production model. The factory could not afford the full version, and the company internet restricts torrenting websites, so this machine will shut down in about a week. <laughs> the rice still isn't perfect somehow, so giant sifting machines once again sort the rice into piles of brown, white, and scrumptious rice. Grinding machines now mill the rice to remove the dust for further processing. Rice dust has a wide variety of uses, including cattle feed and cattle feed. <laughs> After being molested and one final grinding, the rice has a pearly white sheen. Oh yeah, it's a booty, dude. Bush people. Actually, my buddy, uh, my buddy Darren is actually really good friends with uh, Itchy Booty Dubs. Like, uh, sometimes they hop on and they play with us on, on different games and shit. But they're a bunch of cool dudes. Like the shit that they come up with is hilarious. But I haven't. I don't know if I've seen the bush. The bush people one, but I'm I'm gonna watch that. Sometimes an employee <clears throat> cheats death to gather some rice <laughs> for his family. If he is caught doing this, he will be punished with death. With death. The rice now moves to a supercomputer for even yet more sorting. The computer features a whopping 8,283 ejections per minute, which is about the same as a horse. And finally, <laughs> after all this tedious sorting and milling, you end up with... Rice! Yes, rice, the tasty, affordable snack that your family loves! Available in brown and white, rice is sure to put a smile on everyone's face. Try some rice today! Rice is not for everyone. Nursing mothers and those with diabetic conditions shouldn't eat rice. If you suffer from nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, or diarrhea as a result of rice, stop eating rice and consult your doctor immediately. Rice! It's quite nice at a low, low price. <laughs> rice. A what? In many parts of the world, rice is the main grain. What? In fact, it is a food staple. I totally clicked on this. Thank you, Cody Harris. Fuck you, Cody Harris. For supporting congressional term limits. I mean, I agree with term limits, but fuck you. These are Alaskan bush people. Yeah, buckle the fuck up for this one. It's hunting season in Alaska. All right, Beretto man, catch you later. Most people. most people, you know, shop at Costco and shit, but the Brown family chooses to live off the land while simultaneously giving Alaskans a bad name by doing <laughs> stupid shit all day. <laughs> my name's Bear. As a young cub, my human family left me behind to be raised by bears, and they taught me how to climb trees and how to catch fish with my mouth. I um. love you. One day I was scavenging for food and I found a pack of humans who looked just like me. Now I utilize my bear oh instincts my to hunt. 
Oh, yeah, I just found a fresh batch of deer scat. I just gotta get in there and rub it all over my body. I gotta cover my scent so I can blend in with the bush. Oh, it feels so fresh and warm. Now I just gotta oh get my, my god. <laughs> no. Here we see Bear running through the forest like a retard. Oh, parkour. Running through the forest like a retarded child who just heard the ice cream truck. I suggest you keep your distance because once the hunt begins, there's no stop. Ah, copyright. Man. Ah, copyright strike again. Yeah, thanks YouTube. Thanks so much. Your stream is no longer being blocked. Well, thanks. Thanks YouTube. You guys are shit. Dude, it sucks. They keep blocking everything out, man. At age 10. Dearest Christy. <laughs> the comments are good, too. Oh my god. This is ridiculous. Ah, uh, oh well. I might as well call it quits here anyway. I didn't expect to uh, god damn it. I didn't expect to be on this long anyhow. If I could speak the English. But uh yeah, no, I might try to do something like this every week. Probably should do it on my Friday, but that'd be like at eleven o'clock at night. But yeah, no, I'm gonna call it quits here, guys. I really appreciate you guys spending some time with me. It's been fun. Um, I'm going to have to do this again sometime, probably more often than not, but, uh, yeah, no, this was good. Also, if you guys want to shoot video suggestions or anything my way, something I should watch, uh, go ahead and shoot it over to my email or drop it in the, uh, I can probably show it on here. If you drop it in the discussion section here, yeah, right? It's a place where you could sort. You... Yeah, I don't know. It says there's three. But there's not three, but you can put comments there. You can put things there. And eventually, whenever I have like a thousand or something like that, I can actually have like a like a community chat thing. I don't know. But yeah. Anyway, if you guys have any ideas, put them there or send them to my email at coptox at gmail dot com. And then, uh, yeah, we'll do like a whole video thing who knows but yeah now that was a lot of fun i'll have to do that again hopefully at like a more normal time <laughs> maybe a more standard time i don't know i'll have to come up come up with a good time or if somebody else comes up with a good idea or like a good time just let me know and we'll go with that but right, yeah guys awesome that was uh some weird shit but i dig it so yeah Anyway, guys, appreciate you joining me in this one, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.